you want to always use Verify Execution. And in this video, I'll show you how, and I'll tell you why. So when we got uh, modern activities quite a while back, along came a new function called Verify Execution. And Verify Execution is basically a function that enables you to verify that what you wanted to happen on the screen actually did happen on the screen when you're building an automation. And so far, it applies to four activities, and we're going to look at all four today. Again, this is not news, but it's more relevant than ever, and why, I'll tell you towards the end of the video. But let's dig into Studio. So inside Studio, I have an empty project, and it's not completely empty. It has four files in it. Click, type into, hover, and keyboard shortcuts. And those are the four activities that the Verify Execution uh, function applies to right now. And, and so we'll build a small example for each of those four activities. And we'll start with the click activity. So I'll drag in um, a use application or browser activity. And the first application we want to use is our trusty calculator. So I'll indicate application, I'll select calculator, and then I'll drag in a click activity because we want to click a button inside the calculator. So I'll indicate that inside of the app. We'll select the for button, and we'll just confirm because that selector is fairly stable. Now we can then indicate a verification target. And a verification target is basically something that verifies that when I click the for button, what I expect to happen when I click the for button actually did happen, as I said before. So I'll indicate the verification target on the screen. Then I can select that this field right here is where I actually expect some kind of change to happen because when I hit the for button, it should say for in that field. So I'll select that field, click confirm. And there are four types of changes that you can look for when using the uh, verify execution function. And if we look down here in the verify element property, either we can look for an element that appeared on the screen or disappeared on the screen. We can look for text that changed, for example, inside of a text box, or something has visually changed. And visually changed is actually the one we want to use in this case. So we expect that label or that text inside of the calculator to change. I've tried using the text changed um, property. That didn't happen. That works if you're using the type into activity. So visually changed applies to the calculator. So right now, what we said is when we click the for button, we expect that label to change visibly. And if it does that, then everything is good. It'll just run. So let's try and run this uh, small automation here. So it minimizes Studio, clicks the for button, and the automation is done. And basically, we don't get any error messages because everything that we wanted to happen, happened. Everything is good. Okay, so let's try and move into the type into activity here, or sequence. And again, I will just add a use application or browser activity. Then the text or the application that we want to uh, test this time is going to be Notepad. And so I'll indicate Notepad. Then I'm going to do a type into activity. And the text that I want to type into Notepad is simply UI path with Yeva, right? Now, what you'll notice is that verify that UiPath with Yebe is typed is already enabled. So it auto enabled the verification for this type into activity. And that's because if we go into the project settings here and go into the UI automation modern uh, section and then scroll all the way down here to verify execution, expand that, then we can see that there's a couple of settings down here. Always auto verify typed text. We can set that to true or false by default it's set to true, and that's why it auto-verified this type into activity. Also, we can see here that it should display the verification for click, hover, and keyboard shortcut activities. All that means is that when you add one of these activities to your canvas, then the verify execution uh, options are available. So we'll just uh, click cancel out of this, and we can see that it'll uh, automatically uh, verify this uh, text. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the file, It'll minimize Studio and type into the text box or Notepad, UiPath with the and everything is good. It verified that what 
it expected to see in the notepad was actually typed. Now let's try and have some fun with it because if I run it one more time and then delete the last letter, then it doesn't say UI path with the ever. So it's still looking for that. And it's going to look for that for 30 seconds. Now, every 10 seconds, it's going to try and type it again. I'll delete the last character again. And then it's going to try one more time in, in a couple of seconds to type it. And I will delete that last character one more time if I'm fast enough. There we go. Hopefully before it detects that the text was actually typed correctly. And now because we're closing in on the, the default timer out of 30 seconds for the type into activity, it actually does fail. So over here in the uh, properties panel, we can see that we have some different properties. And one is the retry property. It isn't actually set. So um, we can set it to false or true, well, true or false uh, or nothing. But if it's set to nothing or null, then it will actually do the retry. We'll set it to true. Then we'll set the timeout for the retry down here to just two seconds now. We'll set the timeout for the type into activity to 10 seconds. That means that if I do the same thing again, uh, delete the last uh, letter that it typed, you know, if I do that five times, it's going to fail again. But now we're going to run it and then we'll let it uh, eventually complete. For the first couple of tries, I'm going to delete the last letter then two seconds later, it's going to try again. I'll delete the last letter again. And this time I'll just keep my hands off the keyboard and it verifies that the right text was typed into Notepad and everything is good. So that was the type into verify execution function. So if you like what you've seen so far, make sure you give this video a thumbs up or a like. If you like my channel, subscribe to it. I don't have that many subscribers really. I'd love to have more. So, so hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're logged into YouTube and then hit the subscribe button. You can also hit the notification bell, then you'll be notified. That's a little bit annoying, but at least subscribe um, and tell your friends about my channel if you do like it, um, because I could use a few more viewers. So anyways, uh, let's get back into studio. So let's jump into the um, hover file. Again, we'll add use application browser. The uh, application we're going to use this time is my Chrome browser. I went to ebay.com and we're just going to uh, verify that when I hover over the electronics category here, then we'll see this menu here with the smartphones and accessories and, and other stuff. So the first thing we want to do is we want to indicate that it's the browser that we want to automate. That's done now. Then we want to uh, add a, a hover activity. There we go. And then I'll indicate inside of Chrome what it is I want to hover over. That will be the electronics uh, title here. I'll just uh, confirm that. And if we run it, actually, I'll make a couple of changes. I'll set the input mode down here to uh, hard hardware events. I wouldn't do that normally. But if we then change the cursor motion type over here to smooth, we can actually see the mouse cursor move over and hover over that, that uh, um the title here. So we'll, we'll move it all the way over here on the screen. And then you can see the mouse move. Once I run the file, it'll move over to the electronics uh, category. There we go and hover. And now we can see the menu that we expected, but we haven't verified it yet. So uh, let's uh, try and do that. What we'll uh, then do is we'll indicate the verification target just as we did when we used the uh, click activity. And now I want to, of course, have that pop-up appear so that I can point to one of the elements in that pop-up as a selector. And the way you do that is you want to click uh, this button, or yeah, button up here called Hoverable Elements Selection or hit the F6 button. If I click that and now hover over the electronics, then uh, whatever is supposed to happen when I hover over the electronics title is actually going to happen. So now I can move down and I can say, for example, that we uh, want to use the smartphones and accessories title as our uh, target for the uh, execution verification. So we'll do that. It's going to try and build a number of selectors, a strict selector, a fuzzy selector. And no, it didn't uh, build a computer vision selector, but that's okay. We'll click confirm. It's going to complain a little bit now because now it can't see the elements that it tried to build the selector from. But we'll just click confirm one more time. Inside the target, 
for the verify execution here. This is just like any other target when you're building selectors. So what we can do is we can select what targeting methods do we want to use. Right now, we're using both the strict selector and the fuzzy selector. And I like the fuzzy selector because that will allow us to play a little bit um, because the strict selector doesn't have very much information in it. But if we look at the fuzzy selector text up here, we can see that it has uh, some text in it. We'll even simplify it a little bit. And we'll use the check in a text um, here to look for smartphones and accessories. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's let's try and run it with this selector and see if it runs with a verification. So, um, again, we don't have anything uh, popping up right now. So we'll run the file. We should see the mouse cursor move up to the electronics category. And then we'll see the smartphones and accessories title. And everything just ran fine without any errors because it did detect that verification target. Now, if we go to the fuzzy selector now and mess with it a little bit, and we will just type in instead of smartphones and accessories, we'll just type in smart yebe because that's the truth. Anyways, it's, it's late. So we'll try and run it again. And now it's sitting there waiting for a title to be named uh, smart yep and that's nowhere to be found so um i'll just pause the video now because this is going to take 30 seconds or so so pause and it failed so that was uh the hover verification so let's go to the final one keyboard shortcuts again we'll use notepad um so i will of course drag in the or select a, a use application or browser activity. I will indicate notepad. Let me just minimize this so we don't look at that anymore. And then in here we will uh, use a keyboard shortcuts activity. This again is something that I use a lot, keyboard shortcuts inside of different applications. And sometimes when I click or the robot it's a shortcut. I expect something to pop up on the screen and I'd like to verify if that happens or not. So inside of Notepad, we can hit uh, Control F. That will bring up this find or search box, right? So in my automation, we're going to record a shortcut. That'll be Control F. So it's going to bring up that uh, search box and that's what we want to verify actually did appear. So we'll indicate the verification target on the screen. Uh, let's just run this automation real quick because that'll actually bring up the search box and then we can build a selector on that search box. So now we have the search box inside of Notepad. I can indicate the verification target. Now it's not very good at detecting these elements. So I'll just use the ugly method and say, okay, we're going to look for an image that looks like this. It's actually going to work just fine. It usually does really. So confirm that. And now we have added a verification target of that right most part of um, the search box. So um, again, let's uh, let's see what happens if we just close the search box, run the file. I would expect it to run just fine. It did, everything is good. Now, what if we close the search box and press something like Control G, go to line inside of our notepad and then run the automation again. It's not going to work. I can tell you right away. It's not going to work. We're not going to wait for the 30 second timeout. So we'll just stop it. We will set the uh, timeout here to instead of 10 seconds, because we don't want to wait that long. We'll set it to two seconds and then we'll set the, um, the retry to true. So if we again run this file, we're still going to have that go to line thing. So now it's going to, for 30 seconds, try every two seconds to hit the control F uh, keyboard combination. But right now that's not working because we have this pop up blocking it. So if I just cancel out of this within two seconds, we should see the search box pop up. There we go. And then verifies and everything is good. So that was the keyboard shortcuts verify execution function. So why is this so important? Well, basically it's always been important. 
Uh, I haven't used it always, I have to admit, but I'm going to from now on because in the spring of 2025, I know it seems like a long ways away, but it's not that far away. It's like six or seven months. Um, UiPath is rumored to release something called a robot automation healing or self-healing or something along those lines. And from what I've heard, if you use verify execution in all of the activities that it applies to, that will give that self-healing mechanism a much better chance of knowing when it should kick in and try to self-heal the robot and when it shouldn't kick in and try to self-heal the robot because sometimes you don't want that to happen. Sometimes a pop-up is expected, but you want to have that self-healing kick in at the right times and the more information we provide to the runtime and to that self-healing mechanism or autopilot for a robot as it's called, the better the chance of it actually working correctly. So that's why I think you should really um, go out of your way to, to use this. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next one. I have lots of more stuff coming out in about a week. So hopefully I'll see you in that video.